What's up guys, my name is Jun Gray and in this video I'm going to show you how to take amazing screenshots in Rocket League without the need for any Photoshop knowledge and all editing takes place inside the game using Reshade. So I got a ton of great feedback on some of my screenshots on the Rocket League subreddit and a few questions too. Um, thanks a lot for that. So I'm going to show you guys how to install and use Reshade for Rocket League. It's extremely easy and it should only take a couple of minutes to set up. And I'll also include links to a couple of my presets in the description. Um, the SweetFX database website refused to let me make an account. Um, I've tried for several days and they, they won't let me. So I uploaded these to Mega. I've never used Mega um, and I'm not 100% sure if the links work. So let me know in the comments if they did. All right. First piece of information, this video is for after patch version 1.27, however, these steps should still work for later versions because of how Reshade works and the fact that Rocket League is a DirectX 9 game. Step 1, make sure the game is not running. Step 2, if you're going to be using one of my presets, then now's the time to download it and Crosire's Reshade. Both links to download those will be in the description below. Step 3. Paste the SweetFX preset text file into the Rocket League launcher file location. Mine's located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Rocket League, Binaries, and Win32. So you just click and drag that in there. I already have one in there, so I'm, I'm not going to replace it. Step 4. This part is optional, but I like the installer to be somewhere that I can always find later, like inside the Rocket League install location. So, paste the Reshade Setup application into the same location. Run the Setup Installer. Once the interface pops up, let it load. Once it's done loading, click in the center where it says Select Game, and choose the .exe file rocketleague.exe. It should be the only launcher inside the Win32 folder. Next, you'll need to select Direct3D 8 or 9, because Rocket League is a DirectX 9 game. Now, I already have it installed, and I'm not going to override it, but uh, you shouldn't get this box. Uh, it tells me failed because I already have it installed. At some point during the installation, it will give you the option to also install the optional reshade filters. Um, you'll want to choose yes for all, or if you know which ones you want and don't want, then uncheck the ones you don't want. I recommend installing all and playing with them in the reshade overlay in-game. And once you find out which ones you're never going to use, you can always go into the reshade dash shaders folder then into the shaders folder and delete the ones you don't need for example i got rid of the ca and crt filters because those are ones i'm never going to use okay so some of you may have been wondering since rocket league is an online esports game and the creators are serious about keeping people from using third-party cheat software yes there are a few out there for rocket league um but you may be wondering if using reshade is 100 safe to use and not get banned um, I can assure you that you will never run into any issues using Reshade with Rocket League. I'll put a link in the description to a Reddit post where one of the developers, Psionics Eric, even recommends the use of Reshade. Step 5. You're basically done with the install now. Just launch the game and run the Reshade overlay. In version 3.0.6, the current toggle overlay macro is Shift plus F2. You can change that later. Once you open the interface for the first time, it should give you a 2 or 3 step tutorial. Uh, once you get to the step where it wants you to choose a preset, click the drop down arrow and select whichever preset you want to use. I highly recommend starting from scratch to get one set up to your personal liking. Um, to turn your reshade on and off, at the top of the interface select the settings tab and under general, overlay key, you can change that to whatever you want. I have an insert um, because uh, Rocket League doesn't use insert for anything. And I changed my effects toggle hotkey to scroll lock to turn on and off reshade. And step six, uh, if you just wanted to use a preset you downloaded, then you're done. You're done now. But if you want to make your own, uh, this is this is where the madness starts. This you will waste tens of hours, <laughs> maybe even hundreds. No, maybe not. Okay, you're gonna want to go back to the home tab. So this is this is where things get really interesting. So up here, um, the the first the top half of the overlay is the the filter options. You can turn on and off all kinds of different filter filter options. Let's see, we got we got ones like clarity, which is which is gonna it's gonna brighten up certain 
objects and it will also uh, sharpen objects. Um, we've got some anti-aliasing options. A lot of them really don't work too well. Um, we've got different color filters. Ooh, that one's that one's a little ooh, too vibrant in, in my opinion. We have some tilt shifts. And down here in the bottom half, this this may this may look extremely in intimidating to anyone th that's that's using this for the first time, but it's actually very simple. Um, up here at the top you have all your filters, and down here at the bottom you have your filter options. So let's see the 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 the, the very top filter I have I have turned on is filmic pass. So down here we've got the settings for each of these filters. So I need to find filmic pass. And in the bottom, they're organized in alphabetical order. So let's let's find the Fs. Um, we got this fill. Um, let's see, film grain, film grain, film sharp. Oh no, it was uh filmic pass. So we've got filmic pass right here. And so we have all these little text boxes with all these numbers. So you you you, ha you have a couple options here. Um, uh, first off, before changing any of these. Either get a screenshot or remember exactly the number that was in here by default. Um, before just changing all of them, screwing them all up, forgetting what they were, and then having to reinstall or changing presets. So you're, you're going to want to remember which number. So we've got 850 here. So what we can do is we can go into this text box and we can, we can change it. Let's just change it to 10. So that does that. <laughs> That doesn't look good. So you're going to want to change it by small amounts. But typing in numbers and then changing the numbers is is not is, – is, it's okay if you want to fine-tune it. But what you can do is you can click and hold down inside the box and drag left and right and actually change it using your mouse cursor. So each box has um, has a minimum and a maximum. And it, it depends on what the the creator just decided to set it as. So this one was 850. I liked it at 850. So I'm going to change it back to 850. 850. There we go. So th so that that that's how you um edit the different settings for each filter. Um, the filters that I use most of the time is Filmic Pass, which, which that's that's what it does. Ambient Light which adds some bloom on the light in the game. You can also uh, increase or decrease bright light. You can increase or decrease um, low light. Curves, which is uh, kind of another color and lighting um, filter. Levels, which is also a lighting filter. Um, Technicolor, which you can change. You can also change the colors of certain filters. Um, let me find Technicolor down here. Technicolor, here we go. So right now, my Technicolor is set on a on a white filter with all all um red, green, and blue set on 224. So let's let's change that. Oh, oh, we can we can go very red or even more white. I'm gonna change it back to 224. There we go. And some other ones I use. Um, let's see, I use Bloom and Lens Flares. Which adds some bloom on ambient light a little bit. Um, so far, it's only doing that <laughs> that light on the very left side. Um, colorfulness, which adds a little bit of color. MXAO. MXAO, um, it is a filter for ambient occlusion that adds shadows to the edges of objects. Um, this is one you do not want to play the game with on. This will murder your frame rates. Um, with this option on, I get about 25 frames per second. <laughs> so this this is one that you do not want to use for gameplay. Um, on, only screenshots. Um, I've got Vibrance. And then we've got Depth of Field, which my default one right now is set to Marty McFly Depth of Field. Um, you can go down here to depth of field and select different depths of fields so we've got these this is a this is a very 
uh, a strong one right now, which you, actually you can go back and you can go down here and change each one. Um, and the reason why my depth of field is going crazy right now, um, let's go up to depth of field. All right, here we go, depth of field. I always know it's depth of field because it's it's the longest one. It has the most uh, text boxes. So, depth of field. Um, <laughs> depth of field is both a good thing and a bad thing. You do not always want to have a depth of field. Um, it can it can ruin your screenshots, even though you think it looks amazing. So I'm gonna turn on depth of field. So w the reason why this is going so crazy right now, this is this is, I love this about um, reshade. It's so amazing that it does this. Um, but the second option, second option down here is depth of field underscore mouse driven um, AF, which is autofocus. So if we turn that off, it's going to look at whatever is in the center of the screen, which is set by these numbers. If you change these numbers, uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is the center of the screen. Um, the second option is if you turn it on, it's going to set your depth of field wherever your mouse is pointed. So if we point it way down here to the floor, all the close things in the camera are going to be in focus. And you can also change, um, let's see, the strength of the closeness and the, the background. So let's just turn that off real quick. Have it, have it focus on the back of my, my beautiful Venom here. All right, so the near blur curve and the far blur curve we've got right here. So 0.5 for near. And whenever you hover over it, it's gonna it's gonna most of the time give you uh, a description of what each of these does. So the near blur curve, curve of blur closer than focal plane. Higher means less blur. So let's turn this all the way down. All the way down was actually 0.5. So if we turn it all the way up, see you can see in the the very bottom. It blurs out less, and it actually blurs out, or unblurs some of the back of my car, but it still keeps the background out of focus. So you can you can play with that. And then we've got depth of field far blur curve. So I've got one set on 3.4 right now, which is uh, which I had set for previous screenshots. So you can change that. You can. Oh, good lord. So only only the bat like my tail light and these things sticking out are in focus because that's that's where I have my depth of field set to, and then if we turn it all the way up, it's gonna get about half of the uh, well not not even half. It's gonna get about thirty feet down the down the field in focus. And then it's still going to keep the back out of focus. So say we don't want the back, the uh, the background in the wall, that blurry. We can we can change the the blur radius, which is the size of the blur of the individual pixels. So if we turn it all the way down, it's it's going to be just slightly blurred. But if we turn it all the way up, it's going to look absolutely insane, which you could you could get some pretty neat screenshots out of. And no, that doesn't look great. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if this helped you out or a dislike if it got you banned um, for using Reshade. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, you won't get banned for using Reshade. Later, guys.